Radio Free Cybertron. Transformers. Rewind. This week on Transformers Rewind, it's the series finale. Nemesis Parts 1 and 2 from Beast Wars. What? For everything that ever was. really am fond of Nemesis Parts 1 and 2. One thing, though, um, I guess just to get it out there, um, I never really understood, though, why is one part a Bob and Larry episode, and then they brought Furman in, for some reason, to do the other part? Big I, name draw? Did, did, how are they going to draw this? It's the last episode. How are they drawing big, anything? Big. Does anyone know that? Um, I mean, I, you know uh, everything, uh, Philly. Yes, was it a sympathy oh. thing? Was it like... <laughs> Did he like, do other episodes? Did he have something much? left over in his contract so he had to do this one? This is the only episode that he did, at least that I know oh, of. This is the only episode he did. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's certainly weird. I mean, but it was at a time like, when he wasn't doing anything else. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing right. is, it's very much. That's what very... I'm saying. I think it was almost a. Is it like a. I think it was almost like a sympathy thing. Like, you know, hey. And that episode uh, sure is a firm episode. Uh, everybody dies. Every but you can tell that. Everybody... Everybody... The dialogues had a good, strong Bob and Larry pass. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, in, in part one, I am an unashamed, unabashed uh, Depth Charge fan. I love Depth Charge. And I, I love, I love his rivalry with um, X so much, uh, with Rampage. And the fact that it ended in such wonderful, in such a wonderfully huge scale, I... I think it's really fitting. I really, I really did enjoy that. But um, so many things happen in this episode. It, it's, it's the unraveling of the series. Um, and Beast Wars was such a... At the time... Even at the time... Yeah, even... I'm thinking back. I'm like, that was forever ago. And then again, it wasn't. But it really was. Even at the time, we it knew... It really was. We knew we're, how... We're, we are old, yes. Brian. We yeah. are old. But even at the time, <laughs> we, knew how, we knew how important Beast Wars was. To us as Transformers fans, even then, it was it maybe a little more impactful then because it was the only other thing besides G one, pretty much. Yeah, but and some comics, but hell, who reads those? Exactly. <laughs> but that was not untrue at the time, you know. It, it's yeah. very true, but it was just like Nemesis was this. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe maybe Furman was in it because, to send it off because it was such a huge deal for fans. I don't know, but basically everything unraveled in this for the most part. And they, at, towards the end, with the end of part two, they really had to sort of squeeze stuff in. But um, what, are, what, are, what are some of your favorite uh, parts of this episode, guys? Well, I'd have to agree with the depth charge and rampage thing. I think that was the best possible ending for those two. Yeah, although um, I rewatching it, I was kind of like, you know, Death Charge promised he was going to stop the nemesis, and he never even <laughs> hit close. <laughs> you know, he like, got a little distracted there. He, got, he yeah. totally got thrown off, you know, what he was actually trying to do. He so, met his Moby Dick, like, right there in the ocean, so he had to do something. Right. It's still, you know, like, way to go. <laughs> like... Well, I mean, my favorite part of the interaction with them is when uh, Rampage asks him if he remembers his friends. And he's like, and they were delicious, too. And I'm like, oh, God. That's <laughs> Tasty ones. So <laughs> yeah, well, I, just, I, I guess his filters will adjust to that, too. But, yeah, so pretty much uh, the episode, um, I guess, leading us up to that point. Uh, Inferno and Quick Strike, and I love Quick Strike and Inferno so much. And Waspinator are basically told they have to go out and they're finding a new base. So these are the post, um, the post Dinobot, uh, inner, yeah, uh, humans, proto humans. Oh, so, I thought you were. No, I thought you were drawing a comparison with the G One Dinobots. No, because no. 
Because because Inferno and and, and Quickstrike have turned into complete schmucks by this stage. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. They did not used to be, but like the Dinobots, they turned into schmucks uh, in they, the third season. They, they totally did. They're kind of the Bulk and Skull of Beast Wars, aren't they? They are. The- by that stage, absolutely. This is the one, isn't it, where uh, Inferno pops out from behind the thin tree? Yes. yes <laughs> it absolutely yeah. is. But uh, they, they face down the humans, and the humans fight back. And Yeah, uh, they get beaten. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. By people with sticks and my, against a transmetal fusor, and, and like the hey. scene for, oh, really, or, or like the important second. I would say the second most important scene, but the most probably the most important scene for Waspinator in the in this season. Uh, Waspinator is like, screw you, I'm done. I'm tired of being a Predacon. I'm tired of getting the crap beaten out of me all the time. You guys do whatever. I'm done. Of course, then he gets blown up. And then he blows my head. Perfect. But that's great. There was no other way to play that at all. Yeah. Like that. But th- things get pretty serious again, though, uh, because this is when Depth Charge is basically said, "Hey, told, hey, the Nemesis is underwater. Uh, I can't swim, so you've got to go take care of. Uh, you got to stop it for us, no matter the cost." And he agrees. <laughs> he doesn't even hesitate at that, and I loved that part. Yeah, I mean, he's a hero. He really is. He's just, you know, he's got he's got a vendetta that he's got to take care of. Uh, but he's he's a he's a maximal through and through. But of course, then he runs into Rampage. And sploosh. Bye bye, guys. And then we're pretty much left with uh, Nemesis unfettered, pretty much. And of course, you have to remember what a huge deal this was. Because this was the G1 ship. This is every, everybody was shitting their well, pants. It's the dark side. And I, and I recall <laughs> that there was a bit of controversy at the time, too, because there were several people that the name were. Of the episode? The they name were of, pulling the. Well, no, no, no. They were pulling the, uh, wait a minute, the Nemesis wasn't underwater. It was on the ground. They found it in Micronauts. And, you know, it's like... Micronauts, yeah. Micronauts, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Chris. You could have just skimmed it. Anyway, whatever. No, Byron, um, Byron yeah. Karza used the uh, Heart of Cybertron to uh, take over the Microverse. I, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't let him get by. <sighs> okay, go, go, go ahead, JD. Yeah. Anyway, so there was a there was a bit of controversy though at the time because some of the people were you know crying foul because they're saying no 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 the ship was the ship wasn't underwater then you know it was and they there was just some confusion because people got confused between the Decepticon ship that got built and crashed into the water and became the base and then the one that was found on land yeah was that was you know, a lot of fun to try to explain. Yeah, there was two schools of confusion. One was like, well, no, because it was in a mountain, so why was it underwater? And then there were other people who forgot that there was an original ship and mm-hmm. thought that the, the one that was the undersea headquarters for all of the cartoon was this one, and it was taken out of the water. So why did it was... And it was, and then, of course, there were the people who got all flustered because they called it the wrong name. It wasn't the Star Drive. Star Remember Drive, that? Star Drive. Remember that? Oh, yeah. I would have called it the Dark Side. It's just, I like that name, Dark Side. I guess I'm thinking... But how do you else. spell it? Yeah. yeah. Beast Wars had that already. Yep. Of course they didn't. I mean, that was exactly the same situation as the Star Drive, where people deliberately and willfully misinterpreted a line. <laughs> but it's just that somebody actually canonized that for Beast Wars. So, yeah, so basically... W- they they flesh some things out. I don't remember the the ship ever being described as the most powerful Decepticon warship ever. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. But it suffices to say, any Decepticon warship against some Maximals, eh, they're outnumbered. So, but basically, yeah. The episode uh, first part part one ends off with uh, the ship being uh, resurfacing and um, Megatron being in a pretty good spot for the next episode. Which uh, pretty much starts off with uh, the reading of uh, the Covenant of Primus, which is it starts off with "I am the Alpha and the Omega." And I'm like, oh yeah, this is Furman. Yeah, totally <laughs> yeah, Furman. yeah, yeah. I mean, totally. you're, you know, episode hardly opens, and you're just like, oh, okay, here we are. <laughs> yeah, uh, but at the time, I think we were we were all eating it up. Oh God, like, yes. oh, yeah. oh God, yes. Oh God, yes. I mean, I, I remember I first saw this one on video. Mm-hmm. I didn't even because it was the because I think we've talked the last time I was talking about optimal situation earlier this year, only on video in the UK. So then I saw these on on video one after the other. Yeah, people weren't just posting right, these. Right people weren't posting these to the inter- interwebs back then like they did with car robots. 
Yeah. Or even if Beast they Machines. Did, it was very tiny. It was like a postage stamp. If I remember correctly, Beast Machines aired in Canada first. So um, I think. Beasties? Was, no, Beast Machines. Or did they still call it Beast Machines when it finally it got Beast to Mach- that? It was Beast Machines. Yeah. It was it was con- Beast Machines. So it was consistent between the two. I wish I still called it Beasties, though. Um, yeah, for people watching, and when we're saying Beast Wars, if, if you're from Canada, it's beasties, uh, but yeah. So, uh, but yeah. So, yeah. They, they weren't even posting these episodes on the internet yet because it was 1999, right? Yeah, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, basically, the the uh, nemesis is facing off against uh, Tiger Hawk. Tiger Hawk's yeah, a pretty good. Him? Yeah, Don't Tiger- worry, nobody does. <laughs> I like Tiger Hawk. Uh, he was okay. I mean, for the ten minutes that he was there, but... yeah. yeah, yeah, he was just weird. Like, who can I kill? We're not going to do him. Yeah, we are. Do him. No, we're not doing him. Kill him. Oh, he, wait, we did him after he all. He was this weird quasi. How can I look awesome enough that people will buy me? This quasi spiritual strange hybrid between Ares or Tigatron, supposedly like their offspring or something, or a cross between or them. them or merge. them. But he he was insanely yeah. powerful. And he actually did a pretty good job holding off uh, the nemesis to begin with, and then, then he didn't. He had that thing where it's like <laughs> it, like new characters that are completely overpowered initially, and then eventually wane over time, except that arc just went really fast. It was <laughs> just like, you're insanely powerful and you're dead. Okay. He didn't press the X button fast enough and lost the beam struggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's perfect. Oh, man. So, so, so the high points in this episode, basically, uh, Optimus finds his way aboard the Nemesis, and uh, he faces off against Megatron. And Megatron says, "Okay, have at it." That Destiny and Honor speech, and Prime, uh, Primal just punches him. Yeah, speech this. Yeah, that was very that, Furman again. Very yes, Furman. That was yeah, a, that was a that was a great great Furman esque scene, but. What happened though? Because uh, Dinobot Two and um, Rampage shared a spark. Um, with Rampage out of the way, uh, Dinobot has his spark back, or he has a spark for the first time. Dinobot Two is a clone of Dinobot. And uh, I think anyone who watches this will know exactly what Dinobot Two is. <laughs> and yeah. Not only that, it's like this was like the biggest stretch. I mean, I think maybe for me. Although, do we want to go into that whole dark glass, what might have been thing with him again? You can't, we yeah. can't. We almost have to briefly, though, to explain why in the hell he's not. You know, like, yeah, this is great. I have my own spark. Then he jumps on Primal and himself and starts killing him. Uh, supposedly, uh, when the, in the unproduced script, Dark Glass, if you didn't know, uh, Dinobot, Dinobot writes his um, memory banks to what a data disk. Oh, no, well, he's seen doing that in oh, the, yeah, yeah. So, an episode that I can't remember which but, right but now. That was one that he died in, wasn't it? Or the one it was before. the one right before uh, that. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. I it think, was, ah, that's yeah. right, that's right. But he, they actually did something with that. Something. Yeah, Rat Trap found him and tried to put them in Dinobot 2. Basically. He, that's, he, that was the plot, basically. Yeah, he wrote it. He did he implant it in, but then it like, didn't take. And so yeah. that's why when he completes his spark, it's supposed to be as though... That's everything coming together, basically. Spark plus consciousness equals now he's Dinobot. Yeah. Yeah. Which, Why he remembers things that weren't copied to the backup drives, who knows? But what, what happened after he did the copy, yeah. Right. But, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, Maybe uh, it was, like, wireless. It was, it was constantly updating. It was in the car. There you go. Kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Kind of like my... Uh, what, X5 card or whatever I have on my camera, it connects right yeah. to my computer whenever I take Little a photo. Yeah. It's, like, it's like Dropbox. It's like Dropbox. There you go. It's like Dropbox. Yeah, there you go. He was setting up his Dropbox account for his memory backup. And... You know, you know. honest to God, honest to God, 13, 14 years ago, we wouldn't have thought of that. But now, in, in 2013, it makes perfect yeah, sense. It's yeah. reasonable now. It's entirely reasonable. There was a Dinobot Dropbox. Yep. But, yeah, basically, though, uh, Dinobot uh, pretty much helps Prime by pretty much um, sending information over to the Ark. It's like, hey, guys, you have a uh, shuttle in there that you can use to attack us. Was that, was, they had to infer all of that, but they were given the schematic, schematics. Hey, Rhinox is smart. He figured it out. Yeah, Rhinox has brains. Uh, pretty much slams into the nemesis, yada, yada, yada. Megatron, uh, Dinobot dies. Megatron is, survives. He's strapped at the top of the, uh, the shuttle. They go off into space at the end. There's Beast Wars. <laughs> And, uh, and everybody complains because they cut that one scene out. Yeah, yeah. they where they put Meg, G1 Megatron's uh, spark back. Yeah. Um, which then also caused more controversy. 
Um, boy, it was fun back in the day when we only had one place to complain, wasn't it? Oh, God, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, by this point, all, no, all Spark wasn't around yet. No. Nope. No, not quite. Nope. Dang. Yep, we only had one place to complain. Bot and, talk. Uh, Bot talk. BWTF was there, but I don't know if its forums had shut down by that point. Or, or Big Bot. Mm-hmm. Big Bot. Okay. Or Big Bot. But yeah, so uh, pretty much the only thing left after that is Waspinator is happy at last. Running the humans until, for about five minutes until they kick him off the planet. Until the next series. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a good ending for it's, him, though. Yeah. It's really yeah. Good. But yeah, uh, it's, it's part two, you know, even though it's Furman, it, I think it still stands up today. It, I don't think it's as solid as some of the other episodes from this, the series, of course, but... Um, for a, for a series finale, as far as Transformers goes, I think it's 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 near the top. I mean, it's more satisfying than I don't know. I would say it's more satisfying probably than the animated ending. Yeah, yeah, no question. Yeah. yeah. So, um, unfortunately, I w- true. I would say probably Prime, not counting Predacons Rising, rather, but the final episode of Prime and Beast Machines probably had. Better final episode. Oh yeah, the green smudge on Cybertron. Yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it didn't look so good, but it's it's very much a yeah. It 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 it, it's a, it, it, it does everything. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not struggling to cram everything in the way that Nemesis is. Yeah, and not only you know one thing we mentioned as far as you know that is like there's so many outside references in these two episodes, in particular in the last one. Um, I think between. These last two episodes. Starbase like, Rugby. Starbase Rugby, 3H. Targeting uh, Grid 3H. Was there a, it was, Yeah, there's an M Cypher reference in here. And again, uh, like I mentioned on the show last week, one third of BMOG has slept on my couch. So at least one Beast Wars reference has slept on my couch. And there's a lot of great visual references to everything, too. Like when they have the tractor beam on the arc and you see all the stuff floating around. Yes. Yeah, all the little Couple of things like that. The very there's also moment in the episode as well when Black Arachnid takes. Um, Basically circumcises Rat Trap <laughs> yeah. by proxy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I think that was the most surprising thing I saw. I was like, wow, that's pretty over. Now, did that did that part make the Fox Kids cut, I wonder? Um, I don't think so. I, 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 I have to say that that did get cut. I could see that, I could see that one being left out. Cut. Or Maybe was- in the intervening years they've caught on to it. Yeah. If anyone aired Beast Wars again nowadays, I think they would cut that part out. I think if anyone aired Beast Wars nowadays, it would probably pretty much be uncensored. Yeah, I, th- I would think so, too. I would think so. I don't know. It's not like the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. No, but there's... It's hard to say. Cartoons kind of... That was whenever everybody was... You know, back in the 90s, everybody was pushing one way and censors had to push back another way. And I think shows these days have kind of found the balance of how far you can go. Nobody, no, There's not many shows... Today, not not knocking today's shows or anything, but there's not many shows you today should. that are really are really out there trying to push the envelope, you know. Mm-hmm. And just try and squeeze in suggestive things the way things were in the nineties. Yeah, seeing what they could get away with. Yeah, between Beast Wars and like Animaniacs and yeah, yeah, that was what I was thinking of. Yeah, Finger or Prince. And remember Rocco's Modern Life. I loved Rocco's Modern Life. I, I don't. He got away with Rocko's so Modern much Life. crap that would never fly. Yeah, today. It, was, it was cable too. Yeah. Uh, but yes. Rocco's Modern Life aired in a weird time slot over here. I don't count it. So as far as... It's uh, only because it's here. As far as uh, Nemesis Part 2 goes, um, uh, did anyone... So, Dinobot's second death. You know, it's it's certainly it's certainly not the first, but I watch it and I still get a little emotional with that. It's just kind of like... It's kind of like salt in the wound. Because, uh, I mean, by this point, I'm still like, you know... Watching Beast Wars all the way through, I'm still pretty much torn up over Dinobot because I love Dinobot, and this is just it's it's a cheap way of inserting emotional emotionality back in back into the show uh, because you know they, who else? I mean, they kill they kill Inferno, right? They kill everybody. They kill Inferno. They kill yeah. uh, 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 Quick Strike. Strikes there, yeah. And uh, in depth charge. Depth charge. Right. Tiger Hawk goes up. Yeah, but like the core cast pretty much left. You know, huh. intact. Uh, other than other than well, Inferno and until Quick Strike. Beast Machines, anyway. Yeah, except for Inferno and Quick Strike, because they're still they're, alive in Beast Machines. They're core cast, mm-hmm. uh, but um, all that living. Yeah, but uh, Dinobot's uh, second death still tugs at me just a little bit. I have to admit. 
No, not at all. No effect. I'm, s- I'm sorry. No, can't say is it is anything for me. <sighs> yeah, that's just you, Ryan. Not that much, no. I love Dinobot. I really do. So, any anything else with the episode, guys? Rhinox hit Megadron with a car. <laughs> yeah, that was totally a thing that happened. <laughs> uh, brilliant. <laughs> 